Today, I'm going to be showing you how you can make your animations in DaVinci Resolve super smooth. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, so first things first, let's grab an image like this. Let's resize it down a bit so we can actually see some movement. And I would usually do this like before I learned this new technique was by just playing around with the position, for example, moving it over here. I presume you already understand keyframes, so just hit the keyframe another time and then move it to the other side, for example. And as we can see, it, the movement isn't smooth. It's just bad. It stops abruptly and it just doesn't look good. And tiny change that could help over here is just by right clicking on the keyframe and setting it to ease in and the other one to ease out. That is the default way of making it a tiny bit smoother, but let's get to the big gun. So let's get to the stuff that you actually want to know. So let's get rid of all of these changes. And now the secret here is not to actually do it on the edit page. Like there is a workaround to actually do it on the edit page, but if you do it in Fusion, like I'm going to be showing you, it's way easier. So let's just right click on the image or whatever you're going to animate and let's hit open in Fusion page. Okay, so once it loads, the only thing that you're going to need here is this transform node. You can either grab it from over here or hit shift space and type in transform. You're going to click on the transform node and you can see similar settings to what we had on the edit page. Now let's resize it down a bit so we can move it from side to side again because it's a full time image. If you had just a small tiny PNG, you wouldn't have to do this obviously. So let's now go to the very beginning of our timeline and let's move it to the side a bit, hit the key button go to for example frame 60 because I'm working on a 60 FPS timeline and if I do the animation over 60 frames it's going to take one second so let's move it to the other side and when I now play it you will see that it's the exact same thing it's just a linear effect which we don't want so let's go up here into the spline window and enable this and you can see that our graph over here is linear that means it's just a straight line if you didn't go to school you can select both of these by just hitting Ctrl A or just by selecting them with your mouse like this. And now once you have them selected, you can either hit smooth over here or you can just hit S on your keyboard and this will smooth them out. This will do a similar effect to the right clicking on the keyframe thing and just doing it that way. But you can see it's a bit smoother even than that. So. Uh, in order to see it again, you need to hit this little button. And now comes the part that I recently learned that will make this way better. So once you have both of these again selected, hit T on your keyboard. And this will open up these two options. We can hit this little thing to bring them back on screen again. But once you have ease in and ease out over here, I just want you to set this to about 80%. That works most of the time. So set this to 80, set this to 80. And now once you've done this, you're pretty much done. Like we can go back to the beginning and as you can see, it kind of moves slowly from the beginning. It just does a tiny little bit of motion there and it speeds up dramatically in the middle, like the graph over here indicates. And at the very end, it again slows down and this gives it this nice smooth motion. One thing before we go, just make sure that you're on your transform node, go into settings and just enable motion blur because it's going to look so much better with it. And a tip in this tip is to save this step to the very end because if you enable it in the middle of your workflow it's going to lack your whole project down just make sure you do everything you want in your entire timeline in your entire project and then at the very end just go through all of the transform nodes and enable motion blur by the way if you don't want motion blur on your fusion page you can right click below this timeline over here and just turn it off over here like that and also turn off high quality this is going to make it much more bearable on your system so so once we go back into our edit page, you can see that it's now going to be all choppy probably. And that is because it isn't rendered yet. And it's trying to render it in real time, which most computers are going to have trouble in. Kind of go around this, you want to head up here into playback. And now just go to render cache and set it to smart. These little lines will appear. And as you can see, if I move this clip a bit, it will kind of adjust and it has already rendered it. If it hadn't rendered it, this line over here would would be red. But as you can see, it's blue, it's rendered. So when I now press play, it's actually super smooth. 
because it already rendered all of the motion blur. So as you can see, the animation is super smooth, especially when going from place one to place number two. But I would highly recommend, if you want to bring objects into your scene and out of your scene, you do something slightly different. So let's grab another Ferrari over here. Let's place it right next to it and let's do the same exact thing. So go to the fusion page and now just click on it, add a tiny transform, go down. And now let's say that we want to begin out of the frame. So at frame number zero, we are going to go completely down, like till the entire image isn't visible at all. So let's say minus 0 0.4, something like that. Hit the keyframe button, go to frame number 60, and now just go all the way back up to the middle, for example. So we are going to select these, hit S, and now once you see this again, you are probably going to be tempted to hit T again. But we are going to do this a little bit more manually this time. So if you're bringing something into your scene, you want to bring this lower keyframe right over here and just bring it up and it won't let you go further. So bring up and bring about right there, not all the way to the end, but almost. And now with this higher one, our end keyframe, just hold down option on your keyboard once you're moving it. And this will ensure that you don't go up and down, but only to the side. So we want to move it to about right here. And once you have done this, again, enable motion blur. So it looks a little bit better. Go back to the edit page. And now, as you can see, this is the little red not renders part that I was talking about previously. It has probably finished our entire animation, so let's play it. And it looks pretty smooth as it comes up. It does all of the speed at the beginning, and as it comes to the end, it actually slows down. And it gives this, this nice smooth motion to the very end. And if you want to now move this picture out of the frame, let's get back to our fusion page. And instead of doing it in the same graph as you had before, like doing keyframes, for example, right here, and just clicking on here, I would recommend that you just add another transform node just right after the other one and now let's say that at 280 I want it out so I'm going to keyframe here and I'm going to go back to 220 keyframe here now go to the second one and just move it for example up this time so let's move it up let's zoom in on the graph and now let's do s and this time you're basically going to do the opposite graph from the first one that we had so when i click on my first transform you can see it's this kind of shape over here and on this one we are going to basically do the exact opposite so i want to grab this lower one hold down option and move it to the side almost to the end and the second one is basically going to go as far as i could to the side and also to the bottom like something like that now I wanna, again, enable some motion blur right here. And when I go back to the edit page, it's going to need to re-render the entire clip that we have over here. Okay, so now when we play it, it's going to come in really smooth, just stay in place and then come out really smooth like that. And you can see that it basically does the exact opposite of the coming in part. It goes super fast, then super slow as it comes into place. And now it goes super slow and then super fast as it heads out. And if you stuck to the very end of this tutorial, you're probably interested in this kind of stuff. So I'm going to show you a special technique if you just want to show something for about a second on your screen. So you want to head back to your fusion page and now you can see that our keyframes on transform number one are over here and transform number two are over here. But if you want to show this picture just for a few seconds, and this is one of the main reasons that I use two transforms instead of one. You want to turn on keyframes over here and turn off the spline so we have some space. Now select both of these two. So make sure they show up here, hit this little thing again. And now just bring out transform number one and transform number two. These are basically all of your keyframes. So if you want to move them about, you can simply just select it and now move it to the side and just make sure these two overlap a bit. And now when the animation happens, you can see that it doesn't really stop just for a few frames, but in, even in those frames, it's kind of moving up and down. And this is going to ensure it's super smooth. If you want to do this for even a shorter amount of time, you can just move them closer. And now it's really going to just stay on screen for just a second. And when we let it render out now, we can now take a look at it. And as you can see, it has this really smooth motion that if you're kind of like a nerd into this stuff, it's really going to tickle your fancies. 
So as you can see, it never really stops moving. It's always kind of going upwards and it just stops by for a second. Okay, so that's gonna be it for today. If you have any questions, just leave them down in the comments and I will answer for sure. See you in the next one.